think we're live. Yeah. Hi. So this okay. is um, <laughs> this is our first Facebook Live. This is um, I'm Joe. This is Patrick. This is Gemma. We are live. 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 Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we've come Sat. here. Um, we've been talking about doing this for years now, probably two years, and we thought we're just going to start doing it. So we haven't rehearsed this. Uh, we've just come with a couple of recipes, um, a little competition. We've got some offers on. Uh, and we're going to have a bit of fun, uh, probably for about an hour, we think. We're not really sure how long this is going to take. Um, so the first, thing, the first thing we can use these lives for is revealing our Bake of the Month each month. So a lot of you on the, on the viewing will be our Baking Club members and know all about the Baking Club. We'll tell you a bit more about the Baking Club as we go along. So we're going to use this session each month to reveal the bake. We keep it a surprise. Uh, we know you guys like it being a surprise. Um, we're also going to invite on... Uh, other brands and our friends to come on and tell us about their products and tell us about recipes and, and teach us some new things as well because it's the first one and we're not really sure how this is going to go yet we decided just to keep it to us so Patrick is going to demonstrate one of his world famous recipes for us um, we have an offer running for the duration of the live it's actually going to be live until midnight um, it's for a gin and tonic cupcake kit. Uh, we'll tell you a bit more about these as the show goes on, but these ones here that Gemma's made for us. Um, it's going to be half price. Is that right, guys? Half price. So the code you want is first live. So all one word, first live. And that will get you one of these, normally £20, get you for £10 until midnight tonight. Um, we've got a little competition halfway through, so there'll be a chance to win some more baked in goodies. There'll be a chance to win one of these kits and a few other things. So stay tuned, we'll do that about halfway through. Um, so I think the first, the first thing we do is we're gonna make this month's bake. Mm -hmm. uh, so Gemma, so Gemma's our recipe developer. Gemma's oh, yeah. been with us now for a couple of years. Yeah. Um, Gemma comes up with all of our delicious recipes. So obviously approved by Michelle Room, we'll tell you a bit more about that as we go along and how all that works. Mm -hmm. uh, but Gemma comes up with these delicious bakes, we all have to test them. So pretty much every day. The rigorous the, process. It is, yeah. yeah. So it, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll talk a bit about how the baking club recipes get developed as we yeah. go along. Um, but so Patrick, we're brothers. For those of you who don't know, um, I started the business about five years ago. Patrick joined about three years ago, and we kind of run things together. So we're not. None of us here are professional chefs. No. I think that's the first thing to say is we all are at baked in because we like cooking. We like food. Yeah. Um, I would say, you know, baking, uh, we, all, we all have a love of baking. Gemma, I think, is the, the, the biggest baker of all of us, which yeah. is good because he's coming up Fits with these awesome role. recipes. <laughs> exactly. But we all love food. I think pretty much everyone at Baked In loves food. It's not a prereq because it is on our job description. <laughs> yeah. um, but there's so much cake and so many things to try. So it definitely helps to love food. You have to be willing to try mm. it all the time. We're always constantly baking, always bringing stuff into the office. Probably like three or four times a day sometimes and bringing stuff yeah. in. I'm trying so. to remember a conversation <laughs> someone had that wasn't about food. Yeah, we always, or, talk, or we TV. always make each other hungry yeah. at lunch times as well because we'll start talking about what we want for lunch and then yeah. it just goes on for hours. And, what we've know, eaten or what we're about being, to eat. Being on a diet here is impossible. Yeah, <laughs> so it is definitely It's impossible. really hard. But I think, um, I think you know, I'm biased, but I think it's one of the best places to work, surrounded by cake. Anytime <laughs> we have visitors in, everyone's super jealous of all the cake we've got. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I think we're going to jump straight into the big reveal. Mm -hmm. So we keep the Baking Club recipe a complete secret every month. Um, we release it about five days after we think everyone's got their boxes. Uh, and I think a lot of you like that part of the Baking Club. You like the kind of surprise, recipe discovery and the surprise as well. We love seeing all the pictures. So we've been keeping lots of the pictures um, unapproved on the Facebook group because, you know, some people have got ahead of themselves and we'll be releasing all of those after. We love seeing the photo competition. That's something that everyone in the office really gets. Yeah kind of interested in, we love seeing your bakes, we love seeing the ones that are beautifully shot, we love seeing the ones with, you know, someone who's cooked it and is really proud of it. So keep sending those photos in. Yeah. Definitely. Um, so, so, yeah, I'm gonna hand over to Gemma, who's gonna reveal this month's bake. Dun, 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 dun. We've got Bakewell Tart. So this one, really, I was really trying to think what would be good around Easter months, because um, I knew it would be coming out in March, so oh April, sorry, <laughs> that was the last one. Um, so yeah, I knew that you know Easter was around this time, and I thought there'd be so much chocolate. We did a chocolate one last year. If any of you remember that one, we did do a chocolate cake. So I was kind of thinking um, something a little bit different, something really traditional, something you could serve with um, dinner or lunch or uh, something a little bit fruity. And you know, we had a lot of ideas around the office. This has seemed to be a big favourite for everyone. Everyone's got sort of a childhood memory of a baked bowl tart or. A real traditional feeling so I thought we'll go with something like this and it turned out to be 
I think really good definitely one of my so favourites so our aunt um, if you're watching Adele hope you are watching <laughs> um, always every Christmas comes around and she brings a Bakewell tart uh, and so it's always been a kind of family favourite of ours so I was chuffed when I saw this one coming out and it's, yeah. it's, um, is this one is this one better than I don't know is, is, is Adele on the, <laughs> I, I think this one's better yeah, thing is eight times better than you <laughs> I think it's um, quite a good one as well because, you know, always try and give you guys a different challenge every month. And this one was even a challenge for me because really my mum's the pastry queen. I've never really been that good at pastry. So I thought, you know, it's good to try something a little bit different, not just cake all the time, something um, that teaches you a new skill. So, yeah, I thought uh, pastry might be a really good one. And better, what better place to start than a Bakewell tart? Really? So we probably forgot before we dived in is we like to have a glass of wine when we're cooking. Um, I, think pretty much, I think pretty much most people in this like to have a glass of their favorite tip or if that's wine, gin and tonic, or just a cup of tea. Um, we're gonna have a glass of wine while Cheers. we drink. Cheers, Sauvignon Blanc. Lovely. So this is one of my favorites. Cheers. Cheers, Cheers. guys. Cheers. Um, tell us what you guys <laughs> Cheers, drink guys. when you're baking. So we'd love to know. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Oh, bad, bad luck. Um, but yeah, we'd love to know what you guys drink when you're cooking. Um, when we have our guests in, we're gonna give them the choice and we're nice. gonna drink their favorite tip all. Well, this we is drink. your favourite one, This is my favourite, yeah. yeah. This is my favourite um, Sauvignon Blanc from New Zealand. So, there we go. <laughs> right, so. Lovely. <clears throat> I'll Let's show you kind of a bit on. about what you get in this month's box. Gemma, you're going to start getting everything out mm -hmm. so we can actually demonstrate it. Yeah. Um, the Baking Club boxes we can use. We've got some, like, fancy technology. You might have seen, um, might have seen like, DJ Anna over here with Jana, but we've got, like, two uh, cameras. So, <laughs> we can kind of show you what we're up to. Don't know how this is going to work, but we should be able to switch it. Inside the box, you get your recipe card. Um, you get all the dry ingredients weighed out, recyclable packaging. Um, you get some handy extras, depending on what the product is. You, know, you get a testing skewer. You get the baking paper in this one. We do try and do some kind of collaborations with other brands as well. So we've got an offer for um, the weekend box, which we've done a few collaborations with. This is a really cool children's activity box. Um, really recommend you take a look at this. So you should have a nice offer in there. If you haven't got the box and you want an offer, uh, drop a comment and Jan will hook you up with that. So everything weighed out in just the right quantities. Um, it's nice local flour to us. So Wessex Mill flour from Wantage, which we really believe makes a big difference. Um, so yeah, that's everything you get in the box. So Gemma, tell us, how do we do it? because that's mm -hmm. quite fun to just dive in with that one. Okay. So as um, you can see on this lovely bag here, everything's numbered, so it's really nice and easy to follow the steps and everything's weighed out perfectly for you, as Joe just said. So it's so nice just to uh, take that faff away, really. Do you want me to jump in and do this? Yeah, so I'll just, I'll just cut it open for you. But um, yeah, so this is just flour and icing sugar, um, which is going to become the pastry. Cool. Thank so you very I've much. got the butter weighed out ready as well. How much butter? I'll get you a skewer. 75 grams of butter. Okay, awesome. Thank you. And then rubbing this together to the kind yeah, of breadcrumbs. Breadcrumb consistency. consistency, yeah. It's a little bit soft, this butter, but it should still go into breadcrumbs. And you're just going to get that together um, until it's all kind of combined. And then what we'll do is we'll add an egg yolk into the mixture. So a little and bit then, of a sales pitch because yeah. we've got here. Um, <laughs> You've probably seen that we've started selling all kinds of other bits and bobs on our website. So not only our baking kits, mug baking mix, we've got accessories. This one's been a really popular little add-on, which is the egg yeah, separator. It's really handy because, um, you know, it is a bit tricky when someone says separate an egg or just use the egg yolk. Sometimes you might be a bit like, oh, how am I going to do that? Everyone's got their own technique, but this makes it so super easy because you just crack it straight into the egg separator and then all the white will just run straight out and your yolk will be there ready to use. So... I'm going to do that here now before you're ready to go. So we're doing that. Tell us a little bit more about how we um, get our recipes to Michelle. Because they obviously get tested quite a few times in the office. Yeah. Making so sure they work in different ovens before they go to Michelle. Well, we have like a really rigorous process, don't we? So I'm pretty much kind of, um, I try and get it as ready as possible. I'll bake it probably like three or four times before I get anyone else to test bake it. So it will kind of always start with, I mean, I try and get a lot of my recipes laid out a good year in advance now because mm -hmm. I'm just trying to you know always make sure it's all really prepared but um yeah th they'll go for the process of me baking them until I'm really happy with them and then we'll get two people in the office to bake them so that way we can test other people's ovens at home and make sure that there's nothing I've messed up <laughs> basically so 
Um, and then it will go to you, Joe. <laughs> yeah, so then I have the kind of final say, don't I, in the yeah. office. Um, or Patrick, one of us, um, whichever yeah. one gets to it. And then um, we probably, we haven't really talked about how Michelle kind of got involved in the business. So I was introduced to Michelle um, a few years ago. Um, it's from the, the Waterside Inn, which is in Maidenhead, which is just kind of half an hour or so away from Baton HQ here. And he was a pastry chef by trade, really liked the idea of the business um, and wanted to get involved um, with the baking kit side of the business. So, uh, you know, once we've got the, the bones of the recipe and once we're happy with it, it goes off to Michelle. Mm -hmm. um, and Michelle bakes them uh, and he comes back with feedback to us. And we yeah. tweak them based on his feedback, and then we send them back until he's happy with them. But most of the time, recently, it's been going through. Yeah, I think. Well. I think, I think of all the test baking we do and everything. It's yeah, he's always got. He's always got a few. Well. Yeah, he's always got a few things to change just to like put his stamp of approval on it. But um, yeah, I think it's mm. testament to Gemma, so who's coming up with some awesome recipes now. And you have actually worked in the um, the kitchen yep. at the um, the waterside water for a morning to get yep. a bit of experience, which was awesome. Did a day's uh, um, work experience there with Michelle because he ha came over for a meeting one day and um, I think we're going to talk about a bit of that later on but mm. that was um, <laughs> that was really good fun meeting him and he's such a nice guy um, and he actually was kind enough to offer me to come and work for a day there um, and just see what it was like in the kitchen and the pastries um, pastry chefs and everything there that was just incredible experience so unbelievable yeah, yeah. I've been in the amazing. kitchen for a tour and it's quite incredible seeing it all working it's a yeah it's a, honestly you think it's uh, a little bit expensive but it's not actually in when you see all the work that goes behind it and how mm -hmm. hard they work yeah, and how much intricacy is in every single thing that they do you're like it's worth every penny <laughs> yeah so how are, we, how are we looking there is that kind of enough yeah that's probably perfect perfect and then you want to yeah, just Patrick show you roughly what it looked like so it doesn't matter if they're a little bit kind of crude do I need my hands anymore shall I wash them um you will need your hands a bit okay. but so that's the egg yolk going in and then you're just going to bring it together with your hands and then just use the spoon to sort of bring it all together until you get like a rough sort of shaggy dough okay and then you're going to group it together into kind of a ball up. Uh -huh. It might be a little bit soft at this point, but a spoon should sort of bind it together. Yeah. <laughs> I need to wash my hands enough quickly. Your, um, big sausage fingers. Fingers. <laughs> enough of my big sausage fingers, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to just wash them up before I give it a little stir. Yeah, and then so. the spoon will probably be better use anyway yeah, at this point. But um, we do have a one we made earlier, just in case. <laughs> You're the first to say it. <laughs> You've always wanted to say There's going to be you? plenty of ones we made earlier today. But it should right, be. so stir it together. And then it's going to, once we've brought this together, it's going to turn into a ball. Yeah. So like this, right? Well, what we're going to do is you're going to put it in the fridge for okay. about 15 minutes mm -hmm. just to firm it up because we are getting slightly warmer temperatures now this time of year. So it always does depend on what time of year it is. But um, this will probably, because it's warmer today, it will probably need a bit of about a good 15 minutes in the fridge. Okay. You just want it to be, you don't, as if you could see here, this one we've got earlier, you don't want it to be rock hard, mm -hmm. but you want it to be firm, just so that you can sort of start pressing it out a little bit into a circle first. Okay. And then, um, yeah, we're going to use this one to roll next. It out. Again, you can buy this on the website. This is one of our lovely props. One of that our we've new got. rolling pins, yep. yeah. <laughs> So how, how big are we rolling out roughly? So this is the tin ready to go, and you don't really want to go much bigger than that tin. Okay. So you kind of want to try Why and keep... Why is that? Because it'll be too thin? Um, it'll be too thin, um, and also, yeah, you're trying to keep it to be the same mm -hmm. sort of shape as the circle. You've got to think it's going to just slot in there, so it's going to just be enough for it to okay. rise up around the edge. It mm -hmm. um, should be sort of perfect amount of dough for this... Pr like We've got everything weighed out perfectly for this kind of... Purpose and this is just using an 18 centimeter tin, which again you can you can buy the exact tins that we use on the website. Really reasonable prices for the for the kitchenware, um, and that way you know everything that we're baking here will be the right size. It doesn't have to be perfect, this does it? So no, that looks about right to yeah. me. And again, like rich, if, it, if, it does, it up, yeah, right? like so if it does tear a little bit, you're gonna, yeah. it's completely normal. That Pastry is something that you need to work with. That was quite with. impressive <laughs> speed rolling, I thought. <laughs> Thank you. I thought and what you're going to do now, uh -huh. Joe, is you want to lift up with your hand underneath and then just place it okay. on top of the tin. And that way you'll get, try and put it as central as possible. Yeah, just like that. And then okay. you're just going to peel the paper away very gently so it doesn't rip. Cool. But don't worry if it does, because again, like you say, you're going to have a bit of excess, so you can pat it in if you need to. Yeah. If you're not using the, the greaseproof paper, we the siliconized paper, you can use any kind of greaseproof paper too. Yeah. 
this we, is... we always use our nice siliconized paper, which yeah. is really good, isn't it? So you can buy um, that from good cake decorating shops. I think some supermarkets sell the siliconized paper as well. Yeah. If you just use normal grease proof, sometimes it sticks a little bit. Yeah. One tip I've learned as well is if you want to, you can use a little bit of excess dough uh -huh. and just tap it in the bottom so you get a nice smooth finish. Okay. Um, yeah. Just if you've got any like really big holes, or mm -hmm. that's a good little tip. And then we just um, little patch it up with a bodge. Yeah, a little bodgy. Okay. There we go. And at this point, you don't really need <coughs> to trim it because it's just going to go in the fridge anyway. Mm -hmm. But at some point, you might want to just take these little <coughs> excess bits away. Okay. Um, which I can just do now because it's not really going to matter. But um, at this point, we're going to prick the base of a fork. Uh huh. So <coughs> it's ready for us to spoon the jam on, which so we're going to do. Yeah. We're going to make the jam, or we're going to use one we made earlier. We can make the jam; it's all ready to go. Yeah. We could just show people how it's made. Okay. But yeah, this one is going to be ready for the jam. So I think we we'll probably need camera two. Yeah. So you talk me through it. So that's the jam ready. But here we go <coughs> with the raspberries and the sugar. So this is bag one. We've kind of gone a little bit back and forth. Mm -hmm. But you're going to pop the sugar in first. Okay. Put it onto a, a medium heat. This is our super the raspberries fancy, in. Um, this is our super fancy induction hob from Samson. Mm -hmm. Which actually projects the little images up on the side of the pan, which is super cool. And then you're just going to add in two tablespoons of water. Really nice and simple. And with a spatula. Um, I'll grab another one. With a wooden spoon. Wooden spoon is probably better. We're just going to give it a little stir, and it pretty much does its own thing. But after a while, it will start to slowly break down and make a lovely jam. Sort of like a raspberry compote, really, not really like a jam. But it will be something that we can then spread into the bottom of the tin. How long will that normally take to turn into jam? It takes about five minutes, okay, so cool. we do have one that we made earlier kind of thing, and Perfect. it will eventually start to look like this. So this is eventually what you'll get. All the raspberries will break down, and it will turn into this lovely kind of syrupy, silky kind of jam texture. Cool, okay. As you can see, yeah, they just start to break down like this. It smells so good. I love Every time I make this, everyone in the kitchen comes in and goes, what are you making? Awesome. So should we um, should we jump ahead using the one we made earlier? Yeah. So cool. yeah, you want to spoon that into the base of the tart tin. Okay. So this is um, this would have been chilled. No, this is the no, one that hasn't it, been chilled yet. It doesn't. No? It doesn't get chilled till the raspberry uh, jam right, goes okay. inside. So all of the jam inside. Yeah, all of it. Because at this point as well, you probably would want to leave the jam to cool for a little while. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why we've kind of got it ready, so that you've got it cooled, ready to go. Okay. This is a good dessert as well as a cake, isn't it? So oh yeah, it's of, perfect for anything really. A lot of people really. have been having it as their um, dessert for Easter Sunday lunch. We yeah, did, um, it's so nice and light as well. It's definitely not too filling. You can have um, cream, ice cream, custard, all kinds of things with it. Mascarpone. Mascarpone, awesome. So the jam so that is That will go into the fridge, and then uh, we'll have the one we made earlier. Okay. Come out. Describe it. It's, a, it's not it's a, a meme. A comedic right. <laughs> uh, picture with some words on the internet. It's some kind of new mm -hmm. thing. It's a meme. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I don't know what you mean. What's funny about memes? <laughs> not really with it, these guys. <laughs> cool. So what's up so next? So now we're going to do the centre for the tart. Okay. Um, which means that we're going to pop this butter in, which mm -hmm. is again 75 grams of butter. And is that soft? Yeah. It's better yeah. to have it soft because you want it mm -hmm. to be um, whipped up nicely. I think so, a lot of our recipes, we say use soft butter. Yeah. And it makes a big difference if you do actually use soft butter. There's a few mm. where I've been rushing and I've used, plus there's a little bit soft. 
and um, just doesn't work as well. It's so a, it's a lot easier this time nice of year soft. as well because it's a little bit warmer. So having it at room temperature is perfect for pretty much any bake. Um, if we say soft butter, just keeping it a couple of hours um, ahead of time, keeping it out of the fridge would be. I don't keep mine in the fridge anyway. I don't know what you. I don't know. I do I keep mine in the fridge, yeah. but it's a grey area, isn't it? Do you guys who keeps their butter in the oh, fridge? Oh, what a question! In the fridge or out? Oh, what of the a fridge? question! I keep mine in the fridge. Um, I think our mum mum keeps it out of the fridge. Definitely out of the fridge in the, in the yeah. rankest little um, yeah. trifle <laughs> dish from like the eighties. She's gonna be super offended now on the phone. But yeah, mum keeps it out. Um, Gemma, do you keep yours in or out of the fridge? Um, in the fridge, but then if I'm baking, I'll take it out of the okay. fridge just because it's easier. It's a grey area though, because I think technically you can leave it out of the fridge. Right, I'm going yeah. to get you Don't to get me started on eggs. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> fridge. So yeah, you want to just beat this butter and sugar together, mm -hmm. bag three, with the butter. If you had a um, stand mixer, yeah, it would be a little bit easier. Then you could really, it, it kind of really helps I to really use, beat um, your butter and electric hand uh, sugar sometimes, together. But it can all be done by hand, so we like to make sure that everything can be done by hand. So that is vigorous. <laughs> someone said you can't beat your butter too much, can you? I never Who again, said that? I don't know. Who said that? It was uh, someone famous. I think it was, um, I think it was, it might have been Michelle Rue. I don't know. It might have been in his book. Who knows? But yeah, really beat your um, sugar okay, until you it goes very nice pale colour. Yeah. Um, we're probably not. We're going to rush it this one. Yeah, just for but the again, we're not going to be actually, you know, yeah, so too there we go. frantic about it today. So yeah, and then we're going to beat the egg in. So that goes in and you're going to beat that together. Wash my hands. The um, kind of idea for baked in, this is kind of a bit weird because the idea for baked in came from talking to a friend about like watching people on a cookery show and it's super easy because someone's weighed it all out for you. Yeah. And now we're on a cookery show where someone's weighed it all out for us. Um, but yeah, that was kind of the motivation behind the baking kits was uh, making it all the best bits, all the funnest bits of baking um, and having a sous chef to <laughs> do all the weighing out for you. And have everything lined up. And now you've finally reached your dream when you've got your own dream. cooking show. Yeah. So Done now, it, um, we're going to pop the almonds in. Okay. Which is bag four. That's so ground almonds. ground almonds, yeah. That's just ground almonds in there. Nothing else yep, in there? just ground almonds. Cool. And is there anything with over-mixing this, or can you mix as much as you want? Or? Well, I would say don't go crazy mixing yeah. it at this stage, just because you've already beat the sugar and butter mm. together. Just combining it. It's just, uh, yeah, generally combine it. If you mix it too much, it might start separating again. Okay. So, all right. Um, yeah, you want it to look How's smooth. That? Look okay? Yeah. So awesome. then now you're going to spoon that into there. And there's a little spatula there if you want to use it to smooth it down. The best part here is to try and space out a little bit because Shall you I don't want it? to. Yeah, okay. You don't want to um, Super can. get the jam combined in with this mixture. So you want to try and It's quite a lot of pressure doing this on live TV. <laughs> Because if you get any swirlage, that would not be good. You do not want swirlage. No. Looks like <laughs> you haven't even dolloped. I haven't. I think I might be in for a bad time here, but we're about to find Just out. Just be slow and steady. Okay, Smooth well, I'm, it I'm out. on live TV. Use the, use <laughs> on live TV. <laughs> Make sure you get all That's the mixture. That's not your forte in live TV in general, no, It's not, no. And right, then, again. yeah, oh God. <laughs> so gen gentle, yeah? Oh no, it's already... Oh no. What have no. I done, Gemma? Gemma's oh. raging. What's going on? You should have oh, done this bit. Oh jeez. <laughs> when I made it at home, it was perfect. Perfect. Oh, okay. I'm telling you. Yeah, you're doing well. That's it. You just want to just make sure that you don't go too crazy at this part because okay. otherwise all the like. Jam well, then what's the worst? It just goes a little bit pink, yeah. Yeah, I'm just being. Yeah, I'm no, just being perfectionist. Yeah, just checking. <laughs> you're gonna be okay. So if you find that you're struggling at this it, bit, it it's really, just gonna go a little really bit pink. It really doesn't matter. It'll be fine. <laughs> it really is just so you just don't combine the two, but okay. it, it's really not going to be a big deal at all. Right. So yeah, this is the last stage, and after this we're going to Do you want it nice and flat, or does it not matter? I mean, yeah, if you can get it as flat as possible, just because then it will rise, hopefully, in okay. a nice level. Um, all right, we're done. Yeah. Great success. Oven's already preheated. So you go straight in the so oven. Go straight in the oven. And how long in the oven for? Um, it takes between 25 and 30 minutes, I believe. OK. Um, We'll just double check that. <coughs> yeah, 25 to th oh, 20 to 30 minutes, so. Perfect, how are we doing for time? We're all right, we're okay. Cool, so right. So yeah, we're gonna just set the timer. So we've got a timer, again, timers are available at Baked In's, um, Baked really In's website. One. This is a really cool timer, really you can cool. actually like, it's magnetic, isn't it, so it can go mm -hmm. on. 
But yeah, we, I don't know if you want to continue doing the top because we've got one we made earlier, so we can start icing yeah, it. Yeah, no, let's ice it. Let's yeah, go. So it's just under there. Okay. That's what it will look like <coughs> so it'll come when out it comes the out oven. of the oven. Well, I've obviously taken it out of the tin, uh -huh. um, and Good I've look. also trimmed it a little bit. Okay, looks good. Oh, Perfect. So what about um, icing? So we've got some so icing already mixed up. Yeah, we've got the icing mixed up. Just in here. So this is, the, um, this is the ingredients. So I won't actually do it. I'll just ice it because you've done this for me. But in mm -hmm. here, we've got icing sugar. Just, just ice icing it. sugar. Just icing sugar. Yeah. And what do we mix with that to make the icing? Um, so this is where we kind of always like to be, you know, um, make sure everybody's quite careful and gradual with this process because um, really you're only going to need about two to three teaspoons of water. Um, and you want to just make sure, you just want to do it by eye really, visually. You want to make sure it looks like a glue-like consistency. Mm -hmm. So don't just like put three teaspoons in, just make sure you do it a bit slowly because it can always differ. Like someone's teaspoon might be slightly bigger than their other one, then yeah, it will just be. Um, so in the kit, you get the piping bag. You can use yeah. your own piping bag. You, you, we give you a small disposable one, but you can use um, reusable ones. If you're really struggling, you can use a little um, freezer bag and just chop the corner off. So, um, what am I going for? Just a lattice. Okay. This is so pressure. What you want to do oh, is you want to just do a, uh -huh. a ring around the outside. A ring? Yeah. Okay. Just go all the way around the outside first. A couple of times maybe, just to make like a nice thick border. And that, that will give you something to then stick the almonds on in a minute. Okay. So that's the finishing touch and the raspberries. I really want to nudge you. This is like proper pressure now, isn't it? Okay. And then again? Maybe just do a bit, yeah, so you've got Next slightly to thicker. It or yeah. Just a thicker line. Just so it thickens up a little bit. And you can then neaten up all these little bits here as well. Mm -hmm. You should have plenty of icing to play with. Um, we always try and give you a little bit extra just in case, you know, you want to decorate it oh. slightly differently or no. <laughs> you're shaking. Mm. <laughs> that would do. Okay. Yeah, and okay. then I've just decorated it um, with like a nice Latisse pattern, but okay. you can do it however you like. Who's that little guy over there? What's he up to? <laughs> did you call it a Latisse? I did. I don't know if that's right, but I <laughs> did call it. Um, yeah, I think it might be a lattice, <laughs> but I don't know. <laughs> Who's right? Is Gemma right or am I? Latisse uh, or lattice? I'm notoriously um, bad at getting my pronunciations right, so yeah, I think I might have got that wrong. What, how do you guys pronounce it? I'm probably wrong. But well, you, I think yours might be the posh version, because I say lattice. lattice. <laughs> Patrick? Uh, I, I used to say uh, lattice, but I think from now I'm saying lattice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Especially when I'm around general. I think it sounds nicer, and it sort of sounds a little bit French, so I quite really? like that. Good, yeah. Okay, how's that? Is that good? Uh, it's okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh. It's all right. It wouldn't... Give me, um, give me marks out not, of 10 on the Facebook Live, ready, please. Uh, don't know what I'm doing there. I'm, I'm panicking. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't win it's the fine. photo competition. No, I don't think you'd win the photo competition. I mean, you are cheating because it is the one I made <laughs> earlier as well. So, Right, so last bit, mm -hmm. you're just going to sprinkle these lovely... Well, I'm not doing it. You're doing it now. Just, uh, <laughs> roasted made a flakes of almonds. Do you want to get the second camera in? Oh. So you can see a close-up. Um, these lovely flaked almonds. They just give it a nice little crunch on top. Mm -hmm. And we're also going to um, finish it off with some lovely juicy raspberries. But yeah, it will look lovely when it's finished, I'm sure. It's not even that bad, Joe. Yeah, well, there's something that says Latisse on here. Do you want to Latisse? Sorry, John. everyone else is Lattice. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. John Bell. <coughs> right, I think I'm a bit too crazy on the outside. <coughs> Last bit. Do I have enough to go around? Do, do we have some Just plates? Enough. Do we have some plates? Yes, I do have some. Do you want me to get them? Um, I did actually bring them over. They're there behind you. Perfect. Do you have your first wheezing? Nine out of ten. Nine out of ten. Cheers. From your mum. Tracy. From Tracy. That's perfect. Thank you very much. I, I, that, was, that was for a good effort. Uh, a good effort. Oh, I know, that was a good effort. <laughs> Thank you, Tracy. Just Thank going you. Around the outside. Very generous, Tracy. So yeah, we have a few. Some of the second time I've made it, so okay. I'm pretty happy. Right, have we got a knife, <laughs> and we'll chop some of this up, yeah. and we'll have a taste. This one here. Yeah. Okay. That's not a knife. Right, I'm going to chop up a couple of bits for the um, the tasting table. What are we going for? What would you um? What would you put on yours? Oh, double cream. 
Double cream. Yeah, pour we got cream. a couple of, we've got any more forks. Yeah. What about clotted cream? Why would you ever have any cream that's not clotted cream? That's what I would like to know. Double cream is like, just, you know, we'll soak it all up and make it yeah. really nice and moist. That's what I'd go for. And you know what my thoughts are, it has to be custard. You're just a custard fanatic. You love custard of everything. Are we yeah. just going to be, um, we're just going to get stuck yeah. into this, are we? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but people want to know when you say almond. <laughs> <laughs> almond. 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 <laughs> what do you think? Uh, almond. Never really thought about it. Almond. 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 Who's almond? Almond. Almond. It's delicious. I would say, I'm going to probably say this every single week, every month, and <laughs> say it's my favourite. A bit like Karina says, it's her favourite <laughs> yeah. every month. But this is actually one of my favourites, I mm. think. It's really good. Really good. <coughs> it's just not, it's not so, overly sweet, is it? I think it's the way this one was iced. Makes it just that little bit better. You your eyes, don't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That is really good. It's awesome. Yeah, the pastry is really... Really thin and crispy, mm -hmm. buttery, really good. It's really nice. So how many people on the live, who's made this bake? I guess, I don't know who's, who's in the baking club, but if you've made the bake, give it a rating out of 10. That'd be awesome. We'd love to see what you, see what you think. Yeah, feedback is always welcome. <clears throat> for those of you who joined late, we've got a little offer on as well for the duration of this live um, till midnight. So if you are watching this, later this evening will be fine but if you're watching this tomorrow unfortunately the offer is only on until midnight tonight on um, Tuesday so the offer is first live discount code is first live all one word and that will get you a gin and tonic cupcake kit half price I'll show you just what's inside one of these we came up with these um, a year or so ago and um, they're one of our best sellers on the website they're really really good uh, so in here you get the recipe card Shall I have a look? Yeah, actually, yeah. Let's get the super cam on. Everything's wrapped up nicely because these are really, really nice gifts. Great gift for gin and tonic, love. We have a strawberry Prosecco cake as well. Uh, but everything's wrapped up really nicely. Um, inside, you've got a bottle of uh, Bombay Sapphire and Fever Tree. You actually use the tonic, um, all goes into the cupcakes to make a really nice light cupcake batter. Um, it's all wrapped up just so we can send them and hopefully they don't break in the post. Um, but that makes a really nice light cupcake batter. Half the gin you drizzle over the, um, the cupcakes when they're cooling. Gives it a really nice um, gin flavour. And then you've got the icing. To make the icing, you also use half of the gin, if you haven't drunk any of it. Um, and we give you the piping bag, which will give you a piping nozzle, so you can decorate them beautifully, like these ones over here that Gemma's made. You've got all the cupcake cases, and there's also a piping bag tucked in there as well. So it's an amazing gift. Um, it's half price, so they're just £10 uh, plus processing packaging. Bargain until midnight. Moment, yeah. Get it while it's it is one of my yeah. favourite ones. So. And they do look really smart, I think. Like, mm. I mean, if you and they to taste him. amazing too. Yeah. They're not like, you know, <laughs> exactly, overly yeah. sweet. They taste exactly like gin and tonic as well. But if you're baking something for a special occasion, they'd make a great gift, but also if you're, I don't know, you're trying to impress someone, something quite sort of quirky and cute and fun, um, they'd look great, don't they? And I think one of the newest things on our website, which goes perfectly with them, is a cupcake caddy. So we've been doing the, uh, the cake domes for a while, and they've been super popular, yeah. really good. And now we've got one for cupcakes, so and you can put all your gin and tonic cupcakes in there. They will just be kept mm -hmm. so nice and <clears throat> snug in there too, they won't move about, mm -hmm. so... And this, this does come out, away. so you can turn it into just a big cake carrier, yeah. or a bread bin, or, or something like, like that. Cakes. It's super flexible. Yeah. So, uh, end of the sales pitch. <laughs> there we go. So thank you, Gemma. Um, I say we're going to make the bake each month, the bake of the month each month. Um, we're not sure who's going to be on the show yet each month, but we'll definitely have one of our friends in and we'll get them to make it as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so it might be Gemma, it might be me, it might be Patrick, but one of us will be here uh, showing you the bake. So I'm going to hand over to Patrick, who is going to take you through our next recipe, which is a um, well, first, we've got Patrick a little, special. Before that, we have That's a little um, do. silly competition. Um, so we're all about home baking and doing proper recipes, but we also have a few other products which are a bit more um, quirky and fun and convenient. And these are our mug brownies. These you make in a mug in a microwave in 60 seconds. And they're just like fun for little kids. They're great for little snacks. Students. Um, students, basically anyone who likes cake but just wants to do something quickly. They're just, they're cute, they're fun, and they're really tasty. They use the same ingredients. They're still really good. But we've got a little idea. We're going to do, like a, each month, we're going to do a silly little competition and when we have um, famous guests on we're gonna, it's going to be even more 
funny and interesting at the moment me and Joe are going to do it. Um, it's a little bit like you might see on popular TV shows where there'll be a leaderboard and each month you get, you know, the, the person will put their name up there and how many they get. So the, um, the basics of it is it's going to be a, a quiz so you can all join in at, at home. At the end of the quiz there's going to be a question for the audience where you can win um, some mug brownies and a gin and tonic cupcake kit. Um, but first, Joe is going to take part in the quiz. The quiz is going to last 60 seconds, so it's going to be a really quick fire. And in that 60 seconds, we're going to be cooking a mug brownie. Um, so first, Joe is going to make one up. You've got to there's find the mug brownie. One over been here. Moved. There we go. Um, there's a mug. There you go. There's a brownie. So I think pretty much everyone has probably seen our mug baking as one of our famous products. But um, yeah, all you need is a tablespoon of butter, two tablespoons of milk, and one of our mug brownie mixes. So, um, we're saying that the um, number of questions that I get right is the yeah, number so of mug brownies. So, so yeah, I've, I have some questions here which I've um, spent a long time um, researching. They're all uh, <laughs> sausage related. Okay. Fairly loosely sausage related, some of them, but they're all related to sausages. And that, that's um, going to become apparent why that's relevant shortly. Yeah. yeah. Well, also, you <laughs> always said that you were... Uh, you always call yourself the sausage master, don't you? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So that's part of the reason why there's sausage-related questions. Yeah, okay. It doesn't anyway. <laughs> um, so that goes in the microwave for 60 seconds. Uh -huh. And as soon as you press start, um, I'll start with the first question. So don't think about them too much, just quick okay. answers. Okay. Uh, press okay. it twice. Ready? Yeah. What is the main spice in a Cumberland sausage? Pepper. Correct. What do Australians call sausages? Sausages. Incorrect. What's the typical reason a sausage explodes in the pan? Uh, the air expands. Too much water. What uh, country is pepperoni <laughs> from? Italy. Incorrect. US. Um, this year, M&S released a heart-shaped sausage for Valentine's Day. Uh -huh. How many hearts does an octopus have? One. Three. <laughs> okay. What breed of dog are fondly referred to as sausage dogs? Uh, da, da, da. Datsun. Yes. Where is a lawn sausage from? Uh, Scotland. Yes. Uh, I once bought a triple artery from the supermarket that was reduced to 20p, but how many sides does a 20p piece have? Six. No, seven. Lamb is a traditional sausage ingredient in Greece, but who was famously followed to school by a lamb? <laughs> Mary. Which country is famous for bratwurst? Germany. Uh, which country is famous for cabanos? Uh, Poland. Yes. What country is the Savoy from? Time's Do I can answer it? Start because I finished. You can answer it. Um, Savoy, England. Correct. How many is that? Okay, so let's stack them up. You've got one, two, three, four, five, six mug brownies. Thank you. That's pretty good. That was pretty obscure. Some of them were a little bit obscure, I'll give you that. So the winner will get a gin and tonic cupcake kit and six mug brownies. Um, so are we ready for the question? What is it? Again, this one's loosely related to sausages. Um, <laughs> so it's gonna be the first person to answer this. So the first person wins. to type the correct answer, and Jana will be the adjudicator, um, will win this prize. So sausages are sometimes tied at their end with string, but which stringless character <laughs> was created by Carlo Collodi. That's a hard one. What? <laughs> That's really hard. Well, Have you got any answers? If someone's Googling, someone's definitely going to get this. Well, everyone's got the internet, so yeah, <laughs> yeah. we'll always rely on someone Googling it. OK. Do you want me to ask you some other sausage-related <laughs> questions while <laughs> we're waiting? <laughs> um, sausages are sometimes <laughs> tied at their end with string. But sometimes, when are they not tied at the end of a string? Well, sometimes they're just tied with their sausage skin, aren't they? They're just you tied got an up. Answer. Okay. Is it the right answer? The answer okay. is. No, wait, wait, go on. Pinocchio! Pinocchio! Oh, yeah. <laughs> <There we> go. <laughs> Who's the Who won? Faye Jones. Faye Jones, Faye congratulations. Jones. This is going to be winning oh, away. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a family winner. So I think you need to send us <laughs> as our cousin to Spain. Yeah. Our cousin Spain. Our cousin Spain. Okay. <laughs> Don't send the address. We'll, we'll get the address. We know the address. Um, congratulations. Yeah. So that's, it isn't just our family on this Facebook Live, is it? It could well be. Yeah. How many people are live? <laughs> Hello, Karina, Karina, and Tracy. Oh, there we go. Karina, Tracy, and Paul. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay. Cool. So well, that, this is going to continue every month. <laughs> It'll get better. The questions will get better. Um, Very creative questions, I must yeah. say. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Spent most of my working day today thinking up um, sausage questions. So, yeah. Cool. <coughs> that's the sausage quiz. So, um, and that's the mug brownie. Made so in 60 seconds. To, um, Jana likes mug brownies. You can pass it over to her. So now we're going to make um, sausage rolls. That's where the sausage questions came from. It's going to get a bit of... Um, some things out here. The reason we're making sausage rolls is um, for the want of getting in a famous guest, I'm standing in for the meantime. Um, and it, my sausage roll recipe has become infamous in uh, the baked in office, not because it's like, you know, an incredible recipe, but um, I, I baked it a couple of times. Once I baked it for our shareholder meeting when um, Michelle Rue actually came down to the office, met everyone. So it's quite a big deal for us. You know, we do have quite a lot of interaction with them, but it's normally. Um, th over the phone or through email, occasionally um, me or Joe will go down to see him. But he came to the um, the meeting, got to meet all our all our friends, most of our shareholders, our, our family members and friends, um, and he got to meet from the office. And he was a little bit late, fashionably <laughs> late. I'm sure he had some important yeah, things was. to do. But when he got there, he was especially hungry. And, um, and pure excited. He about was very excited. I'd baked up some. Sausage well, Gemma rolls. had baked about seven like incredible recipes. Lots of different recipes. And I'd, Cheesecake brownies, that's yeah, one of them. Yeah, and, and had a smorgasbord board of incredible baked in recipes and I baked um, just like one sausage set of sausage rolls. Um, and Michelle went straight for the sausage rolls, dived in early, he's allowed to, and he ate, had one and he said it was, um, said it was delicious. And it was quite <laughs> proud for me to have like a Michelin star chef tell me that my sausage rolls are delicious. I may have embellished that he and told it. Joe that um, Michelle said they were the best sausage rolls he'd ever tasted. It was a half a joke, half just sort of like exaggerating. <laughs> then Joe stood up in a little speech and said, thank you to Gemma for making all the cakes. Thank you for Patrick for making the sausage rolls. Um, and Michelle said it was the best sausage roll he's ever eaten. Um, <laughs> Michelle was very polite and didn't correct, <laughs> correct us and just, uh, just didn't say anything at all. But really yeah. They probably weren't the best, but they're, they're, they're okay. So I'm cheating slightly. I don't know whether it's cheating or whether it is just um, how lots of people do things in life. We're, um, we're not, we're using ready rolled pastry. So there is an amazing Michelle Roux puff pastry recipe, which I think Jana is going to drop a link in. Um, and it's, you know, it is really rewarding baking, your, making your own um, recipes from scratch. And that's partly why the baking club is so popular and so much fun. Um, but sometimes, you know, you haven't got time to do everything from scratch. You know, this is like a... It's quite a challenging yeah, this thing is a, to do, yeah. so not many people do use... This is like a weekday meal, or if you're having a party and you, you, know, you want to prepare some sausage rolls. Um, but yeah, I think the pastry, if you wouldn't mind grabbing out the pastry out, yep. the, um, out of the fridge. Do you need the sausage meal? Yeah, if you grab those out. So, um, I'm not, an, uh, you know, an amazing baker. I'm more, more of a... Um, <coughs> A passionate home cook, and I've, my baking has got you know a lot better since I've worked at Baked In. Um, but I, I like experimenting with ingredients and sort of get, you know making things up as I go <coughs> along. It's a lot harder to do that baking, isn't it? I think you have to be more, yeah, um, more accurate. Precise, yeah, it's yeah, more of a cross between a science and an art, isn't it? You, yeah. you can't just wing it, wing it, yeah. and just chuck ingredients in. Whereas I really like messing around with different flavors and, and mixing things up. And you know, we, we created these different combinations today with a bit of um, a bit of experimenting. So we've got three different sausage roll recipes that me and Gemma are gonna go through. Um, one of them is sausage, cranberry, and like caramelized onion. Another one, another savory one, is gonna be a, almost like an Asian inspired one. I love Asian cooking. In fact, most of my cooking is, is sort of food from around the world, but um, this one's Asian inspired. Um, and the last one is a veggie one. It's a goat's cheese, cranberry, um, potato. potato, and chive one, which mm. is really nice. Um, so yeah, I love sausage rolls just because they are, they, know, they're a great traditional English dish and they're really sort of understated and everyone loves them. It's quite hard to find someone who doesn't love a sausage roll. So if you, you know, I went, had my son's picnic recently and I baked sausage rolls for everyone. Um, and it's just something good about making your own ones rather yeah, than shop bought sure, yeah. ones. They're just- and They're so much better. They're just imp they? Yeah, so it's also just impresses people. And, yeah. And it, but that's actually not very impressive at all. It's so easy, yeah. but it seems like impressive when you, 
when well, you make them. Well, I actually requested this recipe for you for my Christmas party. <laughs> you did, I, yeah. made them, I made them for my Christmas party That's this year, and, and, I and think they went down so well. And so. I think Jana asked me for them as well for a party. And every time someone asks me the recipe, I just have to sort of like make you it up on the yeah. spot. Because um, you're such a winger, you I don't just know. like put everything in. And so if you wouldn't mind rolling out another one of those for me, that'd be yeah. good. Joe, would you yeah, roll out one of those? So it's just a case of like mess, making, experimenting with what you've got and what, what you like um, what you like eating, really. So what a good question would be is um, why don't you all in the audience chuck in ideas for your favourite sausage roll combinations, what you want to put inside them. So... Um, I'll start with the, the uh, cranberry and onion one. So you could, again, you could make your own um, caramelised onions. I've just got some caramelised onion um, like relish. I'm just going to see that in there. But you could do your own just by picking down some onions with some sugar and maybe a little bit of um, salt and pepper and um, maybe a little bit of vinegar as well. And I'm just going to put in some cranberry sauce. You could use whole, whole cranberries as well. You yeah, you can use whole cranberries, you can cranberry sauce, you can, yeah, you can do what you want really. So um, this one sort of almost feels quite Christmassy, but um, I don't think like delicious things should just be resigned to Christmas. <laughs> like if they're, if they're delicious, we should yeah, eat them. This is definitely my favourite one. Um, yeah, something, Michelle liked a little bit of sweetness in the <laughs> yeah. uh, the situation. Oh, I think it's what all was like. that impression? <laughs> that's, 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 that's a terrible impression. That is that is a terrible impression. You're the that? you do the impressions, don't no. you, Jenny? You're good at the impressions. Um, no, I'm not doing it now. You do the, <laughs> you do the same voice for every single. That's just my mimicking voice. So just mix it up a little bit, and then you can use your hands, but um, and then you want to just put it into the centre of the um, of the pastry and turn it into a, um, a long. Sausage shape. So the other thing about these sausage rolls is you've got a lot of sausage meat in them, they? If you go to a farm shop yeah. and you have a sausage roll from one of them, it's serious amount of sausage mm. with some pastry around, which we really like. Now I like, um, <coughs> yeah, to have a really like thick, yeah. girthy sausage roll. <laughs> they are but, really um, nice. Most recipes on the internet will say. <laughs> most recipes on the internet will say. Why are you laughing? You've got Shannon going like this. <laughs> most recipes on the internet will say chop your pastry. <laughs> In half, two to lengthways, no. and make them. But I quite like you really yeah. thick Most ones. Thick. Um, so, I don't know if you've got the sausage cam at all yeah. going. You get the sausage, sausage cam. cam. We go. For so, sure. um, yeah, just make it in somewhere in the centre of a nice sort of sausage shape. Mm. I'm just going to wash my hands quickly whilst that you're looks delicious. Yeah. <laughs> inspecting my sausage. It doesn't look brilliant from here. I'm going to have to. <laughs> cool. I've also just got a bit of. Um, I've got a bit of egg wash here, so um, I'm going to, this just helps, for well, two reasons. One, this helps it um, stick together, and two, this is the key of making sausage rolls look like artisan and impressive, is the egg wash on top of the pastry. Makes it go golden Yeah, exactly, and that's, it's a schoolboy area if you, if you don't and egg better, wash your pastry. And it's better than milk as well. Yeah, you, can use, effort, you could use you milk can or something else. but I definitely always prefer using the egg, because I think it just, it's already that colour, so it's going to make it go lovely yeah. and golden. Whilst I'm doing this, Gemma, do you want to mix up yeah. The, um, Which one am I doing? The other one. So if you want to mix up the um, Asian inspired one. Mm -hmm. So that is, um, this one I think is really tasty. Um, so um, all I've done is I've fried up some ginger, chili, um, garlic, and spring onion. Ch mm. Chopped it really finely and fried it up. So for, this is like one pack of sausage meat. So it's about 400 grams a pack of sausage meat. And it's probably about two cloves of garlic a whole red chilli, maybe three or four um, spring onions, and a chunk Perfect of combination. ginger. I've just fried it up. And pour it in? It, yeah, pour it in. It smelled amazing when it was cooking. Yeah, it's like mm. just all those flavours marry so well together. Okay, I've more ideas for you, Patrick. Go for it, yeah. Like a fresh sage and mm. caramelised red onion. Yes. That sounds Who, so who good. said that one? Decent. And Alison That's nice. There's no like end of, of combos, is Flavor. there? Mm. I think like most things, like, if you wrap them in pastry and cook them, it's, it's rare that it's not going to improve it. Or you know, it's, yeah. it's, it's, there's no end of combinations you could have. Is there anything um, else going in here? Yeah, so in there we've also got, um, this was going to be um, hoisin sauce. But, um, hoisin? Hoisin. Hoisin? Hoisin. 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 <laughs> 
spicy. This is going to be like the game every every month now. We're going spicy to have the sauce. pronunciation um, test. So, but we can't have uh, any sesame seeds in, in baked in, can we? Which um. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah, it's gutting. There's no sushi. There's no. Um, yeah, we can't bring them into the building just because it's one of those. No um, McDonald's. Yeah, no McDonald's. <laughs> burgers. No McDonald's burgers. <laughs> but so sesame seeds and peanuts. The two yeah. things that we just selects. don't let in. Chicken selects are fine. There's no sesame seeds in chicken selects. <laughs> um, so I'm going to whack in a bit of um, hoisin sauce. <laughs> and also, um, it's about, a, so I guess there's about three tablespoons. Oh, it's three smells tablespoons, I'm going to say. Yeah. And a decent Ooh. teaspoon of. Um, it smells like a. Of five spice. Ooh. Yeah. What are the five spices in five spice? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Good question to the audience. So what are the five spices? Oh, nice detraction there. Spice. <laughs> um, I would say cinnamon. Star anise. Star anise. Star anise. Yeah, yeah, definitely star anise. Cardamom. No. 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 <laughs> cardamom. <laughs> Ginger. I don't think it's cardamom mm. now. You're gonna. I, hope it's, I really hope it's cardamom. So Where's my it's cardamom? Because <laughs> then Patrick's going to look really silly. Exactly. Cool. You'll have to eat a teaspoon of cardamom mm -hmm. as a punishment. So do you want to do some more sausage cam? Some more? Yeah. Some sausage, sausage cam. cam. The cutting. So then, you, I mean, you can cut them up as, um, <coughs> as, as big or as little as you want. So you could do little party size ones. This piece, you know, this size. Oh, that's my big Or one. you could do like, you know, if you were going on a, on a big picnic and there was only a couple, you could do like, you know, make it the centerpiece of your picnic and you could do decent sized ones. Um, let's just cut a few up. It's pretty, quite important to have a really um, sharp knife, I think, for this bit, so you don't m mash up your pastry too much. Cool, then um, I'm going to whack it onto a pre-lined baking tin. So easy at baked tin, we've always got so many baking trays and pre-cut baking paper and yeah. Cool, so then you're going to line them on there. Would you like me to start spooning this yeah, on? Yeah, no, spoon out your yeah. sauce jumps there and so then just put it onto a baking tray. You can leave like you don't need to leave too much space in between each one. I don't know why I'm putting it at such random <laughs> jaunty <laughs> angles. But, um, that is um, that is a bit controversial. Causing me yeah. some some issues. <laughs> <laughs> why is there such a big one there as well? <laughs> I, was, I was demonstrating. <laughs> I was demonstrating if you were like going on a on a on a trek <laughs> in the mountain oh and you wanted to, in your knapsack you would have like a that giant sausage roll, a giant sausage, sausage roll, roll to keep yourself yeah. going with. <laughs> um, cool. So that's a that's a Patrick and Joe size sausage roll. Mm -hmm. yeah, so then this is, as I said, this is the key is just to, you, I think you, you probably need like one egg will be more than enough <laughs> per um, batch. Sure how you rolled it? Of um, sausage rolls. Did you roll it should, this should way? Paying attention. I know. Sorry. And, <laughs> so oh I put yeah, the egg wash. Bit of egg wash <laughs> on the top. I don't know if you had to put it on the top or the bottom, but it's just you know, for safety, we will put it on both. And then. Um, egg everywhere. Yeah. And then I, I rolled <laughs> mine. From that way, so I think what you really want doesn't matter too much, but you kind of want the um, the seam to be on the bottom. Uh huh. Yeah. So you to sort of flip it over. Okay, like that. Cool. Yeah. Joe, whilst yeah, we're doing good. that, you can start. Um, you can start doing the last Tuck one. So in. this one is uh, more vegetarian <laughs> one. Do you want to do it here? Yeah. 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 Do you just roll it over like that? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Nailed so what it. we've got here, we've got mashed potato. So mashed potato, I mean, Cooked mashed potato. It's more, yeah, mashed potato. It's more of a. Um, I've just baked the potato and then and then scooped out the centre. Uh -huh. Got some um, soft goat's cheese. You don't need the one with the rind on. Just some soft one there. So just um, how much? Just some. So just no, put the whole. The whole in. lot. Yeah. Okay. Or most of it. Um, so there is. You probably want for one batch of sausage rolls. You probably want like, one really big baking potato or two small ones. How much do you want to mix it up? Um, really mixed up or just yeah, a bit? Yeah, you mi mostly mix it up until it's pretty You could put some there. breadcrumbs in it as well, couldn't you? Yeah, you could put some yes. breadcrumbs in there. You could fry up some onions, put some onions in there. Uh -huh. um, here's some cranberry sauce and some chives. Cool. Ooh, they smell spicy. Cool. Is that okay? That one's not very good. That's not really yeah, and whack opened them up. I mean, you could do them that way. Oh, have you not I, done that? I, I don't know what would happen. <laughs> I don't know what happened. Oh, that way. okay. But, um, yeah, you, you really want to I go feel like, So you okay. can see the, see the top of the pastry gets all nice and glazed. Yeah. And then there we go. On. Yeah, otherwise you wouldn't really be able to um, yeah. glaze it. Cool. And then once they're ready, you just whack them into the oven for... Um, these ones take about... I baked some earlier. They take about... 30 minutes to bake. It depends on how much you're putting in your oven, um, 
what your oven temperature is like. It really so hasn't taken very long, though, has it? Really? Yeah, it's you about. Know, it's like we I put it on 200 <laughs> degrees on a fan um, for 30 minutes. And I'll but get out the one. The whole enjoy. process of making them from start to finish is really not taking long. That's the thing, it just. Yeah. It, it, people are so. People who haven't made their own sausage rolls, and most people don't make their sausage rolls. Um, are like super impressed. Yeah. It's just, it's not impressive at all. It's just like the easiest thing in the world to do, but. Especially just, when you um, get the sausage meat ready made and everything. Yeah, yes. I just think it just, people really appreciate it. When you go to a party and you have um, homemade food. It's not gonna fit, but. People are really impressed. Yeah, they're really nice. Cool. So Joe, should we get the sausage cam on, on Joe's rolling? Okay, <laughs> no pressure. All right. <laughs> Any more uh, doozies of um, sausage roll uh, combos? Oh, we do yeah. want to know. Yeah, go on. Please, go on, go on. So please let there be cardamom. <laughs> okay. Uh -huh. Yes. Fennel. Yeah. Sarni. Uh huh. And I can't believe. Oh, I can't believe you said cardamom. There wasn't any cardamom. <laughs> <laughs> and right. Got a request for a sausage roll baking club. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Decent. Let's do it. Right. Half a knife. Nice. Well, if you know if there's a little one here, if you want to take that one. And you've got your little. <laughs> So in there is cooked um, mashed potato, uh, goat's cheese, chives, and cranberry sauce. Yeah. Cool, so whack these in. Been, um, been having to like, <laughs> been having to like beat people away from my <laughs> sausage all day. But um, people have been trying to eat these sausage rolls. But I said no, we can't. We've got to have them live for the Facebook. Um, so here they are. Yeah. So this little dip you've put there. This is um, that's like sriracha sauce. So if you don't like, oh, it's too spicy. spicy. I thought it was ketchup. <laughs> Oh, I should have let in. you just dunk it in live, but um, there's another one as well. Oh, Whack on the bottom. Down the bottom? Yeah. Cool. So. So good. Yeah. So which one are we going to try first? Ooh. So I'm intrigued to try, see how these ones have turned out. Should we get... Quite big slices. Yeah. We, uh, Cut them a little bit. Got a little plate for you. Which ones are these ones? So these are the um, <coughs> Asian inspired ones. Oh, yeah. Are these the veggie ones here. Yeah, the veggie ones, yeah. Should we go and. Um, so we go. Yeah, go for it. Um, I think I get, I mean, walnuts makes a really lovely um, combination. I would say with, um, with goat's cheese, um, red onion, nice. sort of caramelised red onion again. Um, you could, I mean, walnut and maybe an apple sauce or something as well. If you didn't want yeah. cranberry to still give it sweetness. I think there's not many, there's not many fruits that don't go well with with cheese, is there? So yeah. you, you could put walnut and a grape in there. Oh, I don't know <laughs> what, would happen, mm. what would happen. to the Oh, grape nice brie. Yeah. Brie would be nice. Yeah, or brie. like uh, yeah. Stilton. That would be really nice. Yeah, definitely. What we've got here. I'll take it to the tasting table. So you've veggie got, one. that's the Asian inspired one with chilli, uh -huh. that's the veggie one. Am I allowed to yeah. try this one? Yeah, that's yeah. the one with the cranberry. I'll pop a bit of that one mm. off, I'll take it over. So I've picked a designer and I want to see if this one's it tomorrow. Oh, there might, there <laughs> might be some left, there might not be some left, sorry. <laughs> cool. <laughs> they the taste absolutely amazing, Patrick. <coughs> they do so good. I bet they'd be Quite, nice what do you and reckon? What should I go well. for? I'm going to go for the veggie one first. This is really good. Mm. You try that one? Mm. 
Mm. Mm. Goat's cheese wine is amazing. Not just because I made them. Well, I didn't make these ones, <laughs> but that's amazing. You didn't even make them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're really good. But I guess it also, um, I don't know, the quality of the sausage meat you put in there will make a yeah. massive difference. Um, I went to a food show not too long ago with baked in, and I did some good swapsies with a, um, a chap from a, you know, making his own, mm. he was a pig farmer and he had all his sausage meat in his own, all his, all his piglet products, I don't know what I'm talking about, <laughs> but I swapped <laughs> some baked in cake kits for the nicest like sausage meat ever. Um, <laughs> And it was made a really big difference, I guess, having having sort of really good quality <coughs> sausage meat. Mm. Um, That's really so good. The Asian nice. one seems really unusual. Yeah, really unusual. Mm. Really Again, recommend that, guys. In my so head, good. I planned on sprinkling <coughs> sesame seeds, <laughs> black and um, white sesame seeds on top of those ones, and then suddenly... Mm. They are them. honestly so good. Really nice. Awesome. Do you, you know what, though? I think my favourite ones are the ones from the shareholder meeting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't think I was going to like those, but actually they're, they're honestly so nice. The, the Michelin star yeah. ones, your favourite ones. Yeah, they are. They mm -hmm. are. You can't beat this combination. You said I wasn't allowed to say that's my favourite, but it is my favourite. <laughs> the veggie one's awesome. The veggie one's really good. Cool. We didn't mention <coughs> nice before as well, just to, sorry to go back to the bake well, but we didn't mention that if they wanted to sign up for um, a baking club, mm -hmm. they can get a special code. What was yeah. the Yeah, code? what have we got live at the moment? So that's it try and then the numbers two nine nine. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it gives you guys an opportunity to try it for a discounted price and yeah, I'm sure once you've tried it you mm -hmm. will want to sign up. But yeah, I think we're on recipe forty now, I think. Yeah. Completely different every time. This comes through your letterbox every month, the same day. It'll always be a surprise, always be something new. So we've got a wall of fame next door in our um, in our boardroom with all of the all the recipe cards on the wall. So I think on a future Facebook Live we'll do a little tour around <laughs> around the factory and around the office and um, show you guys that. So I think we've pretty much done it. That's an yeah. hour and three minutes. And we said <laughs> we'd aim for an hour. That's pretty good. We made a bake roll tart. We've made three different types of sausage rolls and, um, and a hilarious sausage-based quiz. So <laughs> is there any questions at all coming through? Any questions you guys have got before we um, disappear off and eat all of these sausage rolls? Because mm. um, got to eat them all. There won't be any left for the guys tomorrow. So. All of them. Any questions? No? no everyone just, it. just a reminder that we've got the competition, so the, comp uh, the, sorry, the, the promotion on the gin and tonic cupcake kit, the mega deal, um, first live, all in word, uh, gets you one of those for £10, a so half price, and that code is live until 12 o'clock tonight, so it's Tuesday the 20... Third <laughs> Tuesday, the twenty third of April, or midnight. That code will be no more. So you know, this year um, we'll do an offer similar to this. We'll mix them, match them. Some of them are better. Um, so you know, tune in to the, the lives each month. Uh, we will. We're getting a guest list together at the moment. We've got um, a queue of people waiting. So um, hopefully, we'll have some cool competitions for their products as well. Um, hope everything's worked okay. Uh, I think technology seems to have hung together. <laughs> Thanks to Jana and Anna for, um, for keeping it all running. Uh, we'll try some more funky stuff with the cameras. I think we're still a little bit, um, bit novice with that. But yeah, thank you for Patrick for the delicious sausage rolls. Thank you, Gemma, for the amazing bake roll tart. No, with no cherries in. So <laughs> Yeah, <coughs> raspberry. Right, I think that is it. So we will, uh, this video, if you did want to go back and watch the recipes for sausage rolls, then it will be on our Facebook page. You can watch it after the event. Uh, but yeah, for now, thanks, thanks for guys. tuning in. Thanks Should we do like in. an awkward wave? Awkward wave. <laughs> <laughs> Are we still live?